So when I tell people that I distill Baiju, most people don't even know what I'm talking about. Baiju is the national drink of China. If you're going to have a drink in China, you're having a Baiju. It's the largest spirit on the planet and it actually, in terms of revenue and volume, outsells rum, whiskey, tequila, vodka and gin all combined. So it's a really interesting and diverse product that most Westerners have never heard of. So I live in Launceston, uh, which is in northern central Tasmania, and up until recently I was working as a civil engineer in road construction and maintenance. So engineering was just getting a little bit dry for me. I was looking around for different things to do uh, in the state, and obviously Tasmania has a reputation for distilling, so I was having a look around that. Um, I think I was on Twitter one time and saw a list of the top 10 spirits brands on the planet and I didn't recognise five of them. And uh, so I looked into them and they were all Baiju. I ordered my first bottle. I didn't really know what I was buying. Uh, I just bought a generic brand and uh, had my first taste and was captivated. So once I discovered Baiju, I obviously had to learn how to distill. So I started off by getting my hands on everything that I could uh, that was in mostly Mandarin about how to make Baiju. And then that took me to visit China. We spent two weeks over there just visiting distilleries, trying to understand the processes. Um, we did a tour up the river, so the Yangtze River is really important in, in Baiju production. You know, hundreds or thousands of factories down the banks of the river. And I, I said to our contact, I said, um, what are all these other guys doing? And he said, oh, they're all making Baiju. There's over two and a half thousand distilleries sitting on the river in this town. So that was when I knew it was bigger than I imagined. <laughs> Uh, making Baiju is a pretty complicated and novel process for a Western distiller or fermenter. The first product that you need to make is called Chu. We believe we're the first people to make Chu outside of China. And so Chu is effectively the inoculant. It's got a yeasty profile and a microbiotic profile and you achieve that through basically sending grain mouldy. <laughs> um, and then the main process is the uh, fermentation. So red sorghum is the main grain. Uh, we've got the steel, which steams the grain and softens it. Then we cool that grain down, we add chew to it, and then we put that into a fermenting bin. Um, we let that ferment for 45 days, and then we remove that grain and then run it through our steel, and steam runs through the grain, strips the alcohol off the grain, goes into the line arm, into the high flow condenser, and the alcohol comes out. So we've uh, been sampling our product out to the local Chinese community in Tasmania and um, actually around Australia and um, the best feedback that we've had is that it actually tastes like baiju uh, but like a whiskey a baiju becomes more premium as it grows older. So the feedback we've had is that it's definitely making the right moves but it's um, still a young product for them. It's a, it's a really complicated spirit to, be, to become a part of. It's because it's so steeped in tradition. And so what we're actually doing is making Baiju with the goal of honouring the Chinese tradition and culture. And that's what's important about what we're doing. Because Baiju is such a culturally significant product of China, for us to be making it in Tasmania down here in Launceston is actually a significant thing. I think definitely drinking a bit of Baiju would help a bit of Australia-China relations. <laughs>